Jacob's charge concerning his burial, BC 1706, 27 and Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt, in the country of Goshen, and they had possessions therein, and grew, and multiplied exceedingly. 28 and Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years, so the whole age of Jacob was 140 and 7 years. 29 and the time drew nigh that Israel must die, and he called his son Joseph, and said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and deal kindly and truly with me, bury me not, I pray thee, in Egypt, 30 but I will lie with my fathers, and thou shalt carry me out of Egypt, and bury me in their burying place. And he said, I will do as thou hast said. 31 And he said, Swear unto me. And he swore unto him. And Israel bowed himself upon the bed's head. Observe, 1. The comfort Jacob lived in, verse 27, 28. While the Egyptians were impoverished in their own land, Jacob was replenished in a strange land. He lived seventeen years after he came into Egypt far beyond his own expectation. Seventeen years he had nourished Joseph, for so old he was when he was sold from him. Chapter 37. 2. And now, by way of requital, seventeen years Joseph nourished him. Observe how kindly Providence ordered Jacob's affairs, that when he was old, and least able to bear care or fatigue, he had least occasion for it being well provided for by his son without his own forecast. Thus God considers the frame of his people. 2. The care Jacob died in. At last the time drew nigh that Israel must die, verse 29. Israel, a prince with God, that had power over the angel and prevailed, yet must yield to death. There is no remedy, he must die, it is appointed for all men, therefore for him and there is no discharge in that war. Joseph supplied him with bread, that he might not die by famine, but this did not secure him from dying by age or sickness. He died by degrees, his candle was not blown out, but gradually burnt down to the socket, so that he saw, at some distance, the time drawing nigh. Note, it is an improvable advantage to see the approach of death before we feel its arrests that we may be quickened to do what our hand finds to do with all our might. However, it is not far from any of us. Now Jacob's care, as he saw the day approaching, was about his burial, not the pomp of it, he was no way solicitous about that, but the place of it. 1. He would be buried in Canaan. This he resolved on, not from mere humor, because Canaan was the land of his nativity, but in faith, because it was the land of promise, which he desired thus, as it were to keep possession of, till the time should come when his posterity should be masters of it, and because it was a type of heaven, that better country which he that said these things declared plainly that he was in expectation of, Hebrews 11. 14. He aimed at a good land, which would be his rest and bliss on the other side death. 2. He would have Joseph sworn to bring him thither to be buried, verse 29, 31, that Joseph being under such a solemn obligation to do it, might have that to answer to the objections which otherwise might have been made against it, and for the greater satisfaction of Jacob now in his dying minutes. Nothing will better help to make a deathbed easy than the certain prospect of a rest in Canaan after death. 3. When this was done Israel bowed himself upon the bed's head, yielding himself, as it were, to the stroke of death, now let it come, and it shall be welcome, or worshipping God. As it is explained, Hebrews 11. 21, giving God thanks for all his favors, and particularly for this, that Joseph was ready, not only to put his hand upon his eyes to close them, but under his thigh to give him the satisfaction he desired concerning his burial. Thus those that go down to the dust should, with humble thankfulness, bow before God, the God of their mercies, Psalm 22. 29.